Good morning, church. Welcome to church. Welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome those of you who are joining us online as well. So glad you could join us to worship God together. We are so thankful that we have the team here live as well this new year. What a great privilege to have the body of Christ coming back together to worship Him. Allow me to read Psalm 103, portions of it, just to prepare our hearts as we look forward to what this year will bring. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and the crowns, and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Praise the Lord, bless His name this new year. And as we begin this year, may we begin on the right foot, blessing His name all the way, forgetting whatever happened last year, but looking forward to the hope and to the new things that the Lord is going to do in each of our lives and as a church. So let me just pray for us to prepare us for this week's service. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the start of this new year as we gather as your family with the music team coming to join us live. But Lord, we thank you that throughout the the past year in 2020, uh, with the absence of the music team, you were still here with us. You were present and you are always present. You You never left us nor forsook us. So God, we thank you and we are gathered here this morning to worship you with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And that may this be a reflection of our offering to you this whole year. So God, we pray, come and take our lives, come and unite our hearts, come and renew our minds and regenerate our spirits as we commit this entire year to you, God. Be honoured, be glorified as we bless your name as the family of God. So we thank you, God. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's rise. Good morning, church. So glad to see you guys again. Why not you just turn to uh, everyone around you and just give a wave. Give a good wave. Say hi. (laughs) So happy to be back in the house of the Lord, worshipping together. Echoing what uh, Pastor Kevin uh, talked about, we want to start the first service of the year, right? With a heart of praise and thanks. So would you just take some time to thank the Lord. Think about this whole year and all that you've been through and still thank the Lord. Even though he even though it's been difficult, but he brought us through uh, 2020. And let's just pray and ask God for eyes to see and experience his goodness in 2020. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us through. What a tough year it was, Lord. But Father, we know that you were always with us. We praise your name. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us back together. We know that things are soon going to get better. We know that we are going in, in a better direction. We can't wait to worship all of us together. Your, your, the body of of Christ all together in one place just worshipping you with our voices we look forward to that day Lord thank you Father
Verse 7, Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard about all he was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the impure spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. Even those who are not human recognize that Jesus is the Son of God. for us, died on the cross for us, so we worship you.
beautiful Savior, the lover of our souls. Father, you love us when we were so unworthy. You love us so fiercely, unwavering, unceasing. You welcome us with open arms and call us to give ourselves to you completely. And here we stand today, Lord, doing just that, marveling at your beauty, dedicating ourselves once again to a God who deserves us, deserves our adoration, deserves our affection. Father, we sing to you.
just three days ago, we crossed from year 2020 to 2021. What a year it has been for many of us in 2020. Unprecedented, apparently, in more than 100 years. And I think in the last few days, uh, we had a chance to reflect on what had just gone by. Over the new year, many of us have received greetings in many, or well wishes as well, in many forms. There's one that caught my attention in particular because it's short and it's meaningful. I received this from a fellow brother. It just a few words, it says, Look back, we thank God. Look forward, we trust God. Last Sunday when we have the thanksgiving service, we heard wonderful testimonies from brothers and sisters who have gone through difficult times. And yet, they find the place in their hearts to thank God to give God the glory. And this is what we should do when we approach the Lord's table this morning with a heart of thanksgiving. In 1 Thessalonians 5, it says we are to give thanks in every circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. And in Ephesians 5, 20, we are, said, we are urged to give thanks for everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right, this morning we approach the Lord's table with hearts of thanksgiving for the way He has loved us, for the way He has watched over us. Looking forward, we can be confident because we tr put our trust in a faithful God, a God who says that He will always be with us. He will go before us he will be with us and He will not leave us. And he's, He says in His Word that we are to be strong and courageous, for I am always with you. And in Romans 8, He reminded us that God who did not spare His only Son, how will He not graciously, along with Him, give us all things? And as we pause and reflect over year 2020 and look forward, let's come before the Lord in prayer and reflection. And I'll pray for all of us before we partake of the Holy Communion. Heavenly Father and gracious God, we want to take this time to thank you, Lord, for your love for every one of us here, for your faithfulness to everyone. As we remember the Lord Jesus, we remember the Lord, you sent him, God, you sent him to die for our sins so that we can be reconciled to you. Lord, you have not spared your only son. How much more will you give good things to us, Lord? And we can look forward, Lord, Lord, with confidence that, Lord, you will be with us always. And you said in your word, you will never leave us nor forsake us. And this morning, we pray that, Lord, you will help us, Lord, to, to come to you with a posture of thanksgiving and also a posture of trust in you, Lord, as we move into a new year. The new year, the difficulties in 2020 may extend well into 2021. And yet we know, Father, that you are in control of everything, Lord. And this, it is in this we can rest, Lord, in you, knowing that, Lord, nothing can happen without you allowing it to happen. Help us, Lord, to this year to constantly look to our Lord Jesus 
in every circumstances to give thanks and to look to Him, to trust Him, Lord, to do everything whatever we, in, for His sake and in His name. We pray and ask all this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup, saying, The cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, whoever eats the bread and drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. So everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and, and drink of the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment on themselves. Let's partake of the elements together. Let us continue with this heart of thanksgiving and offering to the Lord as we take this time to remember to give back to the Lord all that He has given to us, a portion of it. So for those of us who are at home, you can give through the, the tithing codes that will be fleshed out soon. For those of us who are here, if you'd like to drop your offering and tithe, you can do so at the boxes in front or the back, or out at the sanctuary. But let's remember to give to the Lord and to bless Him as He has blessed us with so much. Let us give thanks for the tithe and offering that, we have, that will be collected today. Dear God, indeed, we want to bless Your name. We are so thankful for how You sustained each one of us through 2020. And Lord, as we look forward to 2021, they may bring uncertainty. But Lord, this day, we want to bless your name. We want to offer to you our five loaves and two fish. We want to offer to you our first fruits. We want to offer to you a portion of all that you have blessed us, reminding us that you are the faithful one, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. So God, we, we, we want to bless you, Lord, with this tithe and offering. So God, may you Receive it with gladness to know that your servants and your children have given them to you freely and cheerfully. Lord, may you give the leaders wisdom to use these funds to help those in need, to use these funds to, to build the body, and to use these funds to proclaim the good news to those who need to hear it as well. So God, we thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we continue to bless and, and dedicate uh, our lives to the Lord. In the, in the month of January, we will be dedicating different uh, ministry um, people, service and, and, and elders and pastors and stuff. But today, we have a special dedication to dedicate the Next Gen team. We were supposed to do it last year, but because of COVID, uh, we couldn't do it. So we thought this is a great opportunity for us as we begin a new year to do so, to dedicate our new team, the Next Gen team, Okay, just, so let me just introduce them to you if, if you don't already know them. And then in a moment, I'll invite uh, the leaders to come to pray for them. Okay, so first, look, um, in charge of um, Ministry of Kingdom Jewels, our Sunday school, okay, is, is Nancy Yu. She will be our ministry head. Okay, yes, you can clap if you, if you want. Okay. In fact, you should, just to encourage them. Okay, yeah, so Nan will be uh, in charge of uh, Kingdom Jewels. And then next, Jonathan. 
He's our youth director for youth ministry. And, none but, and last but not least is Gloria, ministry head for young adults. So together, for my, including myself, we formed the, the Next Gen team and we will gladly to serve you uh, this, this coming year and for the years ahead. So let me just invite the, the three of them upstage, together with uh, Senior Pastor, uh, Elder Ting Kwan and Elder Lawrence to come and pray for them. We always rejoice when God raises among us leaders and shepherds for our flock in, in Bartley Christian Church. So now, it's on behalf of the elders board and the leadership team, we want to read a charge to the next gen team, uh, Nancy, Jonathan, and Gloria. The Lord Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? In the same way, I ask you in Jesus' name, do you love him more than this? I love the Lord Jesus more than this. In the presence of God and his people, I charge you to lead his church, Bartley Christian Church, to pursue his eternal purposes, to seek and save them who are lost, to feed the lambs and the sheep, feed them with meat that they may mature, look for other sheep that are not yet in the kingdom of God, and bring them to the fold. By the grace of our Lord, I shall. I charge you in the sight of God and His elect to serve the Lord not by might, nor by power, but by His Spirit. Can I invite all of us to stand? This is a charge to members, the congregations, uh, to support to them. The Lord our God says to you, His church, I have loved you with an everlasting love. I will never leave you nor forsake you. My beloved is mine. Honour your pastors, elders and leaders. Pray for them unceasingly. Love them, encourage them, affirm them and submit to them in the Lord. Partner them in the ministry. Amen. Can I invite you to raise your hand towards the three of them as I pray for them on behalf of the leadership team? Heavenly Father, we... Acknowledge that, Lord, you are the God who is faithful. That you are God who loves your church dearly. And, Lord, in your own time, you raise up leaders and shepherds to shepherd your flocks. And we want to thank you, Lord, for the way that you have nurtured leaders in our church. And this morning, Lord, we want to give thanks, Lord, for the three brothers and sisters who are called by you, Lord, to be leaders in this church to be shepherds of your flock. Lord. We thank you for Nancy, Jonathan and Gloria for their obedience to your calling. The Lord, that they have put aside only pursuits and, Lord, and answered your call to service in obedience. We want to commend them to you this morning. Lord. We pray that, Lord, as they serve you, Lord, they will experience your empowerment in a special way, Lord, they do not serve with their own strength, their own might, but by your spirit, Lord, by your strength and by your grace. And this morning, Lord, we want to pray for them, that, Lord, you will work through them, that they will be channels of blessings for your kingdom. That, Lord, you watch over them, you protect them. Lord, you protect them from attacks from the evil one, 
you put a shield of protection over them and their families too, Lord. Lord, that, you, that they will be able to enjoy, Lord, and to be a protection in a way that, Lord, it will not distract them from service. We pray also, Father, that you give them this heart that will serve with joy, serve with humility, serve with total dependence on you. And in so doing, Lord, they will produce fruits in the flock that you have entrusted to them. We ask and pray all this in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen. Please be seated. We will now proceed to just dedicate the rest of you, uh, those in the ministry that has been assigned uh, today. And we made it such that those of you who are serving with the children, KJ, the youth, the young adults, uh, will be today as well. Right? Can I invite you to stand, those of you who are serving, the elders, the pastors, the staff, uh, those who are serving uh, as treasurers, those who are, of you who are in the PJW uh, Mission Endowment Fund Committee, Investment Committee, Finance and HR Committee, the King, uh, yeah, all right, and those, and, and those of you from home, if you want to stand, I would welcome you to stand as well so that I can pray for you. But before that, I want to thank all of you for serving so faithfully last year. It has been a difficult year. Uh, but thank you so much for standing together with us, serving together with us. Today's passage in a way, I, as I sought the Lord as a word to encourage you, and uh, I'm, I'm taking this charge from the Apostle Paul when he wrote to Timothy. Um, but I'd like to um, make some qualification because he asked uh, Timothy not to let uh, people despise him because of his youth. Uh, during the culture, those days, the, the older ones usually look, don't look so fondly on the younger ones. But now, sometimes the culture is reversed. Huh? So those of us who are seniors, uh, let's take it that we don't let the younger one despise us. Oh, so I, I, because Timothy was an adult at that time too. So let me read this in that context. Uh, all right. The word of the Apostle Paul uh, to Timothy. First, test, First Timothy chapter 4 from verse 10 onwards. For, do the, for to this end, we toil and serve, because we have our hope set on the living God, who is the Savior of all people, especially of those who believe. Command and teach these things. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity, until I come. Devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching, do not neglect the gift you have which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are standing here today. They have joined hands together to serve your people here at Bartley. May I continue to pray that, Lord, your wisdom and strength and discernment continue to be with them. May your Holy Spirit 
continue to anoint them powerfully so that, Father, they will sense and discern your purposes for them, for their family, for the work that you have given them. And Lord, would you just bless the work of their hands. And Father, through their personal life and testimonies, living as light in the world that today is so crooked and dark, that Father, they may shine forth as Christ's light shines within them. And when the Christ's light shines within them, they lift Jesus up. And when Jesus is lifted up, Jesus will draw all men to him. Father, we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. This morning, Pastor Elvin will bring to us the word. So let me just pray for him and pray for us as we commit this time to the Lord. Father God, we thank you for your servant, Pastor Elvin. Lord, for how he has led us with your spirit and with your might. Father God, we pray that as we begin this new year, Lord, may we continue to anoint his, his lips and his, guard his heart. And God, we pray that as we listen to your word through your servant this morning, Father God, I pray that our hearts will be ready to encounter you in a very personal way. God, I pray, Lord, just as you have downloaded and you have spoken to Pastor Elvin through the word today, Lord, that the, the word that he will deliver to us will indeed be a word in season to, to cast a vision for 2021, Lord, to, to, prepare, to prepare us and to, and to align us to what you desire to achieve and accomplish in our lives individually and as a church, as a family. So God, we pray and commit Pastor Elvin and all of us to you. Lord, may we have a spiritual connection with one another today as we listen to your word. So God, be honoured, be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Elvin. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. And welcome once again to the first Sunday of 2021. It's so good for us to be starting the new year together to, in worship of the Lord, whether here or in, at home, at your homes online. This month of August, uh, this month of January, we'll go through five Sundays. And the five Sundays, we will continue to focus on what Bartley Church is going, we are doing. We are building the spiritual foundation of the church, focusing on discipleship, body life, and missions. And I just want to share with you here, those of you who are here this morning, something I shared last Sunday that when I came back to church, I came back because God showed me the potential of what He wanted Bartley to be. And I got excited and said, Lord, if you are doing that work, I want to be part of it. And I, I, I can only put it together in two lines, uh, very simple lines, but it doesn't say everything in detail, but this is the best summary of what God has shown me that He wants Bartley to be a church without borders, a community without walls. And to, to achieve, for us to head towards this goal, there are three important things that we need to build as the spiritual foundations of our lives. And that is discipleship, body life, community life, as what God intended it to be, and also to be reaching out to others. And we put it together as created in Christ to be his disciples last year. And this year, we are launching 2021, created in Christ to belong to his body. And next year, created in Christ to bless through his mission. What it means is it doesn't mean that each year we are doing one thing. We are doing all three things for those three years. But among each of this year, we want to emphasize in one of the three areas of the focus. So we continue to build on our discipleship. But this year, we'll focus on body life. And we continue to be reaching out as well. All right. And at the start of this year, when we, are, when we have a vision and we're working towards building the spiritual foundation, we don't forget that we do this with the seven core values of Bartley Christian Church. And what are seven core values? We exercise believing prayer, accountable relationship, reaching out to the nations, teaching the word, loving, building loving families, exercising stewardship 
of God's resources for us and yielding to the prompting of the Holy Spirit that is in us. So these are the seven core values that we continue to exercise while we work towards building our spiritual foundation. Today, at the beginning of the year, I want to give, my sermon is to encapsulate the three focus of discipleship, body life, and missions. And I was thinking, where in the Bible is there a passage that encapsulates all three? And the Lord led me to this passage in Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. As I read it, I got very excited because it was Jesus' call to the first disciples. And in his call to the first disciples, as I read that passage, I found all three included, all the, these three focus included in this passage. And let me read that to you. So this is the occasion where Jesus calls his first disciples. And it's recorded by Luke in chapter 5, verse 1 to 11, reading from the ESV version. On one occasion, while the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats by the lake. But the fishermen had gone out of them, and they were washing their nets. Jesus, getting into one of the boats, which was Simon's, he asked him, Jesus asked Simon to put the boat a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat. And when Jesus had finished teaching or speaking, Jesus said to Simon, Put the boat out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we have talked and fished all night and we caught nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. But at your word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. And their nets were breaking. They signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they, be and they came and filled both boats so that they began to sing. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And when they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Let me pray. Father, may your words burn in our hearts this morning. And Lord, as we start this new year, would you help us to reflect on our own discipleship journey with you? Lord, where are you? Where are you in my lives? Where are you in my life? Would you use your word to speak to me, Lord, in such a personal way that I know, Lord, that I can hear your voice and your voice alone. Speak, Lord. Speak, Lord. And I will obey. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, the story goes as such. 
recorded by Luke, Jesus was walking by the Lake Gennesaret. Well, some of you have been onto this lake. The common name of this lake is the Sea of Galilee. Those of you who have made trips to Israel, do you remember sitting on the boat going out on the Sea of Galilee? All right, and remember all the stories. The Lake of Gennesaret is also known by, as the Sea of Galilee. And as Jesus was walking by the lake, he saw there were two boats. But there were no fishermen there because the fishermen had finished their fishing through the night. And they were on the beach washing their nets. And then Jesus climbed into one of the boats. And Luke recorded very clearly whose boat was it that he went in? He chose Simon's boat. Simon's boat. And when he climbed into Simon's boat, Simon quickly also climbed on his boat. And Jesus says, put the boat a little bit out of the shore so that he's able to teach the crowd that was pressing on to him. And Jesus took time. He sat down. And that's the posture of a teacher, of a rabbi, and started teaching the people there. But what happened after Jesus finished his teaching session? And that brings us to Jesus' call to discipleship. And that was the same call that he called to Peter. Jesus calls to Peter and asked him, Now put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Basically, Jesus is telling Peter, Simon, that let's go fishing. I'm done with my teaching. And Jesus says, let's go fishing. Take the boat into the deep. And when you reach the deep, let down your nets for a catch. Wow. A carpenter telling the fisherman, a pro, all the night that you have spent and catch nothing means nothing. I'm asking you now, take the boat into the deep. And when you are in the deep, let your nets down. If you were Peter, if you were Simon, the professional fisherman, and after a long night, you caught nothing, and then this carpenter came, sat on the boat and started teaching. And the carpenter tell the fisherman, hey, let's go fishing. Bring the boat into the deep end and lay down your nets. What would be your response be? Well, you're the pro. When Jesus calls Peter, Simon Peter, to go into the deep and let down his net, he was asking Peter to take a step of faith, to launch out into the deep. Take a step of faith now. And what was Peter's answer later? The discipleship call of Jesus to us is basically a call for us to live our lives by faith. So brothers and sisters, we've got to get this clear. If you don't live your life by faith, it is not what it is meant to be. It is not what man Jesus, what Jesus called you to follow him to be. When he asks you to call, follow him, it's a call of discipleship to live your life by faith in him. To launch your life at different seasons, at different stages of your life, continually. 
to launch into the deep in faith, by faith in Him. And my question to you for this year is what is Jesus calling you to launch into the deep? What is the step of faith that God is, Jesus is asking you to take that to take for this year? Let's see how Peter answers, Simon Peter answer. Master, we have told all night and took nothing, caught nothing. But at your word, I will let down the nets. I will obey you. There must be something that Jesus taught on that boat that struck Simon, Simon. As he sat and listened to Jesus' teaching, there must be something that warmed his heart that made him obey. So as we listen to the word of God more and more, we begin to know Jesus more and more intimately. And when we get to know his word more and get to know Jesus more and more, the tendency for us to obey, even though we may not agree, as Peter here, he may not agree with Jesus because he's a professional fisherman. And here the carpenter is telling him, um, well, you, all of you fishermen knows that the best time to fish is in the night, isn't it? But this is in the day. And Jesus says, go, go out into the launch, into the deep and let down your nets. There must be something that Peter heard in the course of Jesus' teaching that he began to be willing, even though he may not agree logically or rationally, he obeyed. But at your word, I will let down the nets. If Jesus is calling you to a step of faith and you're struggling, rationally and in your past experience, you know that this doesn't sound right. Maybe it's too costly. But will you, at the word of Jesus, let down your nets. The call of discipleship is not only a call to live our lives in faith, by faith, but it is also a call to live in obedience. That's essentially the duty of a disciple, is to obey the master. Sometimes, as Christians, as disciples, we are the masters of our life because we want to be in control. So the call of discipleship is a life lived by faith and in obedience. Number two, Jesus calls us not only to be disciples, but to be disciples living in the context of body life, a community of faith. We read from the text that when they were done, when, when, when Simon obeyed by letting down the nets, a miracle happened. The blessing came. A blessing of obedience came. And they were fishermen. They know that this is not natural. <laughs> it's not natural. They began to enclose a large number of fish, so, so many that their nets were breaking. And when they couldn't, they couldn't handle it by one boat, they signaled to their partners. All right? These were not friends. They were not, uh, they were not neighbors. They were partners in the fishing business. And it happened to be James and John, named by Luke, the sons of Zebedee, in the other boat. So when they signaled to James and John to come and help, they came and they helped. And they helped with two boats loaded with fish. And when the two boats were loaded with fish, they began to sing. How is this a body life? We are called 
to live in community. And in the body life, we are called as disciples, we are called to a life partnership of sharing. Sharing both in joy and also in sorrow. The disciple the disciple's life is not called to be a, a lone, lone ranger. We are called to live as a disciple together with other disciples to be in community. And when we are in that community, it's a life partnership together of sharing, sharing of blessings, but also sharing of pain and sorrow of the experiences that we are going through. So when Jesus not only calls us to be disciples, he calls us to be disciples within the context of body life. And in this body life, we share our joy and our sorrow, our blessings and our pain as well. Interestingly, what happened next to Simon is of something happened to Simon. The text in verse 8 tells us that, but when Simon Peter saw it, the miracle of all the fishes they caught, he wasn't singing, hallelujah, thank you Lord for all the fishes that I'm able to catch today and I can sell them for this big amount of money. Thank you for your blessing. No, he did not. When he saw what happened, he fell down at Jesus' knee saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Something happened to Peter at that moment. And we can discern a little bit here from a change of words that Luke records. From verse 1 onwards until this point, Luke records Simon as Simon, only Simon. But when at this point, when Peter, Simon, Simon Peter, knelt before Jesus, Luke used his second name, Simon Peter. And Peter is the name that Jesus gave to Simon. Something within Peter changed. All right? That his name, that Luke recorded his name at this point as Simon Peter. But there was something else. If you remember previously, when Jesus came onto the boat, Simon addressed Jesus as Master, or a polite term as Sir. At this point, Simon no longer addressed Jesus as Master. He addressed Jesus as Lord, here I would propose that there was a moment of epiphany. Epiphany is a term that a person suddenly comes to a realization. And it's only possible when God reveals himself to that person. And I don't know, at some point of your own life, was there a moment where God revealed himself to you and you have no doubt that God has actually appeared to you and revealed himself to you? And this is what happened to Simon Peter. God revealed himself to Peter to reveal himself for who he is. And when Simon Peter realized the carpenter in his boat is not a carpenter, it's not a teacher, but he is God himself. And when he realizes that, Peter just fell down on his knees and said, depart from me. Suddenly, the holiness of God in the presence of that boat, Peter cannot handle it. And Peter says, depart from me. From me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. It was at that moment where Peter just just suddenly realized who Jesus is. And and he, being God, the holiness 
of the presence of God, he couldn't take it. And here, Peter is confessing before God in the midst of a community, among his friends, in the presence of that community. When we are called to body life, we are called to a life partnership of confession in the community. So brothers and sisters, the church leaders want you to be a part of a community. Why? Because it is in that community of believers we learn to be authentic, we learn to be honest with each other. We learn to share our blessings, our joy and our sorrow. When you join a cell, you're not joining a cell of only saints, of people who are perfect. Far from it. When you join a cell, a group of members, you're joining a group of people who are broken people. But redeemed, broken sinners, but redeemed by our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. And that's who we really are. So there is nothing in that cell for you to be proud of in that sense that you will look down on someone who comes from a certain background or have certain problems and you think this member of the cell is a problematic person or sometimes you are so proud that you don't want to join a cell because yeah what can they teach me right but it's not meant to be that way when you join a cell you join that body life to say we are all originally sinful and broken sinners. Without the blood of Christ, we are not who we are today. But because we are redeemed sinners and all of us have Christ living in us, let's come together to share life in Christ. And at different stages of life, we can build each other up, encourage each other, carry each other's burden so that, Lord, we remind each other. And at moments, sometimes, when God reveals himself to you, you take that experience to the cell to share. Share that experience that God has touched your life and ask the community of faith to pray for you. And that's what it meant to be. Jesus calls us to be disciples, not to be lone rangers, but it calls us to be disciples living together in community. I love this quote, and this quote is from uh, a man called Plummer. And it's focused on the two words, the master and Lord. It is the master whose orders must be obeyed. It is the Lord whose holiness cause moral agony to the sinner. So Jesus, who calls us, is both our master and also our Lord. He calls us to a life of faith and obedience. And he has called us to live our life, our discipleship, walk our discipleship in the community. And in the community, we struggle We struggle with sin on a daily basis. And that's why we can take that agony of that struggle to a group of people to share with them, to be authentic and say, I'm struggling. Can you pray together with me? And there's unity, there's strength, there's power within that prayer of the community of faith. But sometimes it's so hard, so hard for us to kneel before Jesus and admit to him that we are sinners so hard for us to confess that we are not perfect because in our world and in our society only those who are perfect are being lifted up and highlighted but that's not what Jesus has called us to Jesus calls us to body life to live a life partnership of sharing in joy and in sorrow a life partnership of confession in community. There's something about confession of our own weakness and pain. You know, when you confess 
there is a release of your heart and you become humble. And that's what Jesus sees in us. And he, that's why he said a broken and contrite heart, he never turns away. You know, brothers and sisters, if there's some people out there who tell you that by the grace of God, we don't need to confess our sins anymore, it's a lie, all right? Because God calls us into a community of faith and in our struggles, we are called to confess our own weakness and our own wrongdoings. Thirdly, Jesus calls us to be missional. And this is found in verse 10. Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. You will be catching men. It's a life of intentional disciple-making. When Peter discuss, Simon Peter discovered who Jesus is, all his life focus was on fishing. And now Jesus tells him, well, you, can, you will now be focused on catching men. But before that, Jesus also told Simon, Peter, not to be afraid. The thing that lies in our heart that hinders us from discipleship, from growing, from being missional to reach out is always a sense of fear. And Jesus says, no, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid because I'm the one who's doing the work. You just be the channel. Just be the channel of my words and be the channel of my blessing. And intentional discipleship, what does it mean? It means Jesus has now given a new purpose in life to Simon Peter. Well, Simon Peter, don't chase after the fish anymore. All right, don't chase after the fish, but start catching men. So brothers and sisters, what are you still chasing today? What are you still chasing today? And you still, and whatever you are chasing hasn't satisfied your soul. And Jesus had already told us, okay, stop chasing after the fish, but start catching men, catching men for Christ. Catch men who are alive today. Catch men who are alive today and catch men for the rest of your life. And that's intentional disciple making. Don't chase after the fish that so often slipped out of your hand. But start catching men. And when Jesus is in the boat with you, oh, you won't believe the number of men that you can catch. And you're catching men who are alive and you're catching them for your life, for the whole of your life, catching them to be disciples of Jesus. So Jesus calls us to follow him in discipleship, living a life of faith and obedience. He calls us to walk this discipleship within the community, the body of community of faith, the body life, living a life of sharing and confession in the community of faith. And to be missional discipleship, living with a renewed purpose and intention to catch men to follow Jesus. Brothers and sisters, these are the three challenges that the leadership of Bartley are asking you to join us. Discipleship, body life, missions. But let me say something. Because there's a cost to it. Very often, many other, some other people might tell you all the good things about discipleship. But they forget to tell you there's a cost to it. 
and the cause is at verse 11. And when they brought their boats to the land, although the two boats with the filled with fishes was beginning to sink, they managed to reach the shore. But when the two boats loaded with fish reached the shore, what do you think Simon, Peter, James and John did? Did they start counting the fish? Did they start washing their nets? Did they start putting up a sailboard for how much that fish is to be sold? Perhaps because they catch so many, they can sell it at a discount. Nothing of that. When they reached the shore, the three of them, Simon Peter, James and John, they left everything. They left the fishes that they caught. They left their nets. They left their boats. And simply follow Jesus. What is Jesus asking you to leave behind this year? Something that you have perhaps have been holding on to? A relationship? Something that is precious to you? But unless you let it go, you will, be having, you will always be walking with Jesus and dragging something with you behind. I don't know whether you can read this. Ah, I think so. Today, many people talk about cheap grace. Cheap grace is, I want salvation, and after that I live the life I, I want to. Cheap grace. As long as I invite Jesus into my life, I say the salvation prayer, after that, I'm the master of my own life. That's cheap grace. But Detroit Bonhoeffer, who wrote the book, The Cause of Discipleship, reminds us, there's nothing called cheap grace. There's only costly grace. And costly grace is the treasure that is hidden in the field. For the sake of it, a man will gladly go and sell all that he has. It is the pearl of great price by which the merchant will sell all his goods for it. Jesus cannot be second. When he asks you to follow him, he can only be alone and the sole person who will satisfy all your desire. Are you prepared to count the cost and give him your all? To live behind the things that hold you back from being faithful and following him? So going, following Jesus into 2021, there are three questions that we can take home to reflect. First of all, is Jesus in your lifeboat today? Have you actually even invited him to come on board your lifeboat? And if, he, if he's on your lifeboat, is Jesus your master? Is Jesus your Lord? The second question, in the year 2021, is Jesus calling you to launch into the deep with him? He's not asking you to go alone. He's just asking you to trust him, to take a step of faith into the deep. And will you obey him? And the third question is, what else do you need to leave behind to follow Jesus? Can I just leave these three questions with you? And I would, for a moment of silence, just come before the Lord and ask Him, what is it that He has for you 
for this coming year. And then I'll just close in prayer. And after I close in prayer, Cheryl will lead us in a closing song. Father, we thank you. We have experienced your mercy and your grace from the day we came to life, even in the womb of our mothers. You crafted us and created us, designed us, and there is no second other from us. You have called us, you gave us life, you called us to follow you. You have allowed us to experience your love, your grace, and your mercy. Father, would you, this year, once again, help us to recommit our lives to follow you, to follow you as our Master and our Lord. To walk by faith when you call us to launch into the deep. To obey you without question. And you have called us to walk in discipleship together with others in a community of faith. And in that community, for us to learn to share our joy and our sorrows in the midst of sharing, which will include confessing to each other our brokenness, our weakness, so that, Lord, our brothers and sisters in that community can come alongside us to pray and to support us. And, Lord, for this coming year, what is it that is holding us back from giving you everything? What is it that we have not yet fully surrendered to you? Can you help us, Lord? Help us to leave behind the things that just so hinder us. Perhaps it's a property. Perhaps it's our work. Perhaps it's a relationship that we need to commit and surrender to you. Father, would you just reveal yourself to us once more as you reveal yourself to Simon Peter, that you're not just a carpenter, you're just not a teacher, that you are God himself and you want us to be our master and our Lord. Father, would your word continue to linger in our hearts and our minds. Help us to discern your purpose and your will. Give us hearts longing to know you, to love you, to serve you and to obey you. With this, we give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. You know, brothers and sisters, in closing, I've asked Cheryl to lead us in a song that I hope will encourage you in this journey of faith as disciple. Would you stand?
stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God our Savior through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory majesty dominion and authority before all time and now and forever and all of us together declare Amen Thank you Pastor Alvin Please be seated Let me just give you two very quick verbal announcements before we roll the video announcements for us Okay, so first uh, we're going to kick off our, our the year Okay, this coming Friday with an online Zoom prayer and praise Okay, so it's a good time for us to start off the year coming to pray together. Okay, so why come and attend prayer praise online? Okay, well, we, we are limited by the capacity, so we want to encourage as many people as, well, as, as you can to come and join us to pray. Okay, but these are three things that I want you to remember why come to pray, prayer and praise. One, at prayer and praise, we will pray for the church, matters of the church. Two, we will pray with the church. So we pray with somebody in, uh, uh, in, 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 the, in the church in, through the Zoom, that is, okay? We pray with the church. And finally, we will pray as a church for the topic of the month. For this month will be education, okay? For, for the educators and, and, and the students and stuff like that, okay? So come for prayer and praise. We will send you the link via our, our weekly WhatsApp broadcast, okay? So come and join us for our prayer and praise this Friday on the 8th of January at 8 o'clock for our first 
prayer and praise of the year. Okay, and then the next announcement that I need you to, to bear in mind is that we are, we are rolling out the, the Trace Together um, sign-ins and, and sign-outs where you come into church. And so do take note of the, the government uh, restrictions and, and guidelines for us to gather together as a church. Please, re- a, a gentle reminder, if you are not from the same household, please do not sit together. Only same people from the same household can sit together and also please maintain the distances that, that are required uh, within your zones. All right? And before you leave, after the video announcements, please only exit through the, the designated um, exit points for your zones. All right? Okay, so now let's take a look at this week's announcements to keep up to breath on what's happening in our church coming months ahead. that's all for this week's announcements and thank you for coming for service have a blessed week have a blessed year ahead god bless you see you next week